Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. I am KJ, 14 years a master fitness trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, and most important to me, I'm a happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen to yours every Wednesday here on Facebook on the Get KJ Fit fan page. You can also check me out over on Instagram at Get KJ Fit. I'd love to see you there too. So, you know, if you've been subscribing since the new year, we've been in a detox series. Now we're in a renourishment series. So once you've detoxed um, and you've really worked at like eliminating a lot of things that are inflammatory in your body, it is very wise not to just jump back into old habits. Last week, I did bring you a pretty amazing cauliflower pizza for those moments of weakness where you just have to have the good comfort food. A lot of you did get that recipe in your inbox. Thank you so much for all of you who have signed up for that. But today, we're going to bring it back in. Cheat meals are awesome, and I'm so glad last week I could bring you that cheat meal that's not as guilt-ridden. Um, but we're going to bring it back to the nourishing part. Now, what I notice about people I coach if they starve themselves in the day, and that doesn't mean they're not putting food in, it means they're malnourished. They're not giving enough nourishment to their food, to their bodies with their food in the daytime. They end up being the people who sabotage their dinners. They, they are so hungry, they usually reach for something that's less than nourishing because their brain triggers them. I need fats, I need carbs, and so they're gonna reach for something less than nourishing. Um, and also, they become late night snackers. A satisfied body and a satisfied brain is a well nourished body and brain. So, today, I'm going to be teaching you an amazing salad. I don't even really know the name of it because I'm going to be using tuna. And if you don't like tuna, you're going to be using chicken, okay? And if you're vegetarian, you're going to omit that altogether. The salad's still phenomenal. Um, but, but first we're going to start with the dressing. This dressing is something you can, it takes five minutes to make. You can pre-make it. You're avoiding all the preservatives. It is packed with nutrients. And I'm going to explain my selections on here. Um, and you can keep it in the fridge for like seven days if it even lasts that long because you're going to love this. You can pre uh, prep your meals, prep your salads without all the, the juicy veggies and just, you know, you do today's salad or you can even like get really creative and start doing salads all week. Um, this dressing is going to carry you through the week. It's delicious and it is really high in protein and really smart. So let's start. I'm using a Vitamix. You can use a food processor or a Ninja. I know Ninjas can do a lot of the same work. I think the Vitamix is fantastic. Um, we're starting with fresh cleaned and dried. I've had these clean for maybe about 30 minutes, patted dry with a uh, paper towel, and then I left them out so they really are dry. This is fresh cilantro, and you can do a third cup. And then when I say that, look at this is all stems and everything. I just get my little third cup, and I just push it in, and it's packed. Yep, that's about a third cup right there. If you don't measure, it looks about like a small handful. Um, not a, a huge handful of fresh cilantro. If you're not a cilantro lover, I actually think this is not very cilantro-y. Is that a word? It's not super potent in flavor in this uh, particular dressing. I actually am adding fresh to the salad because I think it deserves more cilantro in my salad. So if you don't love cilantro, I'm going to tell you it's super full of amazing chlorophyll. Um, Green food is awesome for us, especially in fresh herbs. Really fantastic. Now we're gonna go for tomatillos. If you do not know what a tomatillo is, I'm sure you're gonna find it in your regular market. I got these at Walmart. Um, they're the husk wrapped green tomatoes and you'll find them at most markets. You're only gonna need two. The, this is one small, one large, because I didn't want two giant. Um, but you're gonna see, if you're not familiar with these, I'm gonna show you the fun about it. We're gonna take the husks off, okay? So it's kinda like peeling the tomato. We um, grew these in our fire escape in New York City. And I didn't quite know what a tomatillo was, except I loved tomatillo uh, salsa and certain foods that I had tomatillo in. So I learned what they were when mine were growing. And I was like, what on earth is happening here? They have like shells, husks. Um, this one's not coming off as easily as I'd like. It's a little sticky here, okay. 
So you'll notice when you're peeling these husks off, they're a little sticky. I'm actually gonna run to the sink real quick and uh, wipe that off with water. It's gonna be a little quicker, so don't go anywhere. It's gonna take me a second. And I do suggest you rinsing them once you take the husks off. Helps with that slimy factor. Okay. Maybe I should have pre-husked this one because this one is stickier than the large one. It didn't come off as well. Okay. There you go. Hope you didn't miss me too much while I was gone. My sink's not on camera. I washed them. I want to show you what's inside of the tomatillo, if you're not familiar. You want to roughly cut them. I mean, the Vitamix does a great job, but if they're not completely one unit and round, check out the inside of the tomatillo. It does not look like the same as a red tomato, right? It's a little gelatinous. May I say that? It's slimy, a little snotty, and it's super, I think, um, citrusy. It's, it's uh, definitely not going to taste like a red tomato, so I don't suggest just eating them. I've, I've never really done that. I usually use them in foods, and they're great in salsas and sauces, and today they're going to be great in our dressing. Bam! Two tomatillos husked, washed, chopped roughly. How's that? One jalapeno, a jalapeno. You're gonna rock the jalapeno, and if you're not into jalapenos and you don't do them often, I'm showing you what's up. I'm taking the knife inside the top. If you can see this a little closer. Cutting around. You see that I cut around. It's completely got no attachment now. I'm gonna take the knife, and I should be doing this on the cutting board. Watch me. Um, I'm going to take the knife down the side, got it, turning it around to the other side, take the knife down that side. Cool. That maybe was not the smartest kitchen move I've ever done with no cutting board under me. Please, I'd love to hear your comments. What a fool I am. Okay, but luckily no one was hurt and I'm not bleeding. And what I did that for is I set it up, hopefully, that I can peel it open and avoid all of the seeds going everywhere because the more you touch the seeds, the more you're gonna be crying later because that oil is gonna stay on your fingers no matter how many times you wash it. So I've got this opened. The seeds are intact, sitting on this little inside heart. You see that I just pulled that out? A lot of seeds going on in there and not so many left. That is the beauty of a jalapeno. Not a ton left in there for me to have to make a mess of because they all stuck around there. Cool. Um, you want to take the spines out. The spine and the seeds are the hottest part. So I'm going to despine it. That's just me cutting away so the little spines are gone. And make sure there's no seeds. If you like hot, spicy foods, you might leave two seeds behind. Uh, maybe three. So that you can get more heat into this dressing. Uh, this dressing, I want to call it like a fiesta dressing. So I've got my two sides roughly chopped. That means just I chopped it like four pieces, kind of like tomatillo tosser in there. I'm going to scoop these seeds aside. I don't even need to touch those, right? They're in the napkin. Okay, let's we'll start rocking with the rest of these things. We're going to go for lime. This is like a fiesta ranch, I would call it. I would call it like a zesty ranch. Fiesta Ranch? I don't know what to call it really. <laughs> like, I'm making up names here. Um, you're, cause I would not call it a cilantro ranch because I don't think it's strong enough cilantro. This is one teaspoon of fresh squeezed lime juice, one teaspoon and one half, one and one half teaspoon. Okay, that's not a ton, but it's gonna bring enough acid to really make this delightful. I'm just gonna dry off these little guys. I'm going to need them for my dry herbs. And last but not least, I should probably have grabbed a garlic. You want two cloves of garlic. Uh, boop, I'll show you the quick way of, you know, taking these rinds off. You chop the ends off the garlic, both ends. So the tippy points and the flat end, right? And then if you use the side of your knife and press it flat, I don't know if you guys can see past all this, Press it down flat, you hear it crush, and look at 
the peels just fall right off. I've got a peelless garlic, just that easy. And when you crush the garlic, you actually release the healing benefits. So it's very good to crush your garlic, guys. All right, that was a nice little kitchen lesson there. Let's get into the wet factors and the herbs. Okay, we're gonna start with one cup of Greek yogurt. Now I today have Faye. Are you familiar with Faye? This is 5% milk fat, which got me so excited. Um, I am one to preach whole foods, so the cow doesn't come fat free, so nor should we change his, you know, milk to fat free. So I do suggest this 5% or there is 2% out there too. I don't recommend fat free. To me, it does not taste as good and it surely is further from the real deal. Whole foods means how it came to you, how it came out of the cow, how it came out of the earth. So we're gonna one cup, full fat or 5% plain Greek yogurt. Now this is an option, you could use sour cream. If you absolutely hate Greek yogurt and you never wanna see it again in your life, go with sour cream. Cool, that's your tip. And, whoa, I dropped my lid. Last but not least, and where did I put it is the question. You know, I was in a scramble getting ready for this. You can tell because I was five minutes late. And I think in the process of everything, I lost my cream cheese. Like, for real, I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> so, when you lose your cream cheese, and it's supposed to be room temperature, you blush and get a little, uh, you get a, a little flush in the face. I'm blushing. Um, but you're gonna grab one from the refrigerator and it's not gonna be room temp. Let's see how this rolls out. I've always done it with room temperature because it makes it softer. Um, and now I'm wondering where the mystery pack of cream cheese is gonna be somewhere in my house. It's, it's gotta be somewhere nearby. And I don't even know, maybe I threw it away when I was thro throwing away things for the prep. I hope not. Anyway, I got myself a not room temperature block of cream cheese and you're gonna go with eight ounces. So here's why I'm telling you this is pretty high protein is we're not only packing in 15 grams of protein from our Greek yogurt, we're packing in another, hang on, two, eight serving, 16 more grams of protein, 31 grams of protein in here. Um, so yes, and very low carbohydrate. The 5% yogurt is like five carbs. Is that right? Yes, five carbs, that's it. That's like naturally occurring. So that's the liquid, the lime juice, what would be room temperature cream cheese, and the, um, what did I just say? The cream cheese. Now we're gonna go with the dry herbs. Let's start rocking out some dry herbs. Use your teaspoon, huh? one teaspoon of, of dried chives, one teaspoon. Um, I do suggest dry because uh, I've only made it with dry. I haven't done it with fresh, but I think fresh would bring out more flavor. One teaspoon, two teaspoons parsley. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a homemade ranch. Um, so you could buy a ranch packet, but usually there's like frightening additives like food starches and things to make it not stick together. So I'm just showing you an easy way of having ranch done for you out of the herbs in your cupboard. If you don't have these herbs, it's worth the investment because you're gonna love this salad dressing so much, you're gonna be using it all the time. Okay, let's go with now a half teaspoon of my others. Half teaspoon of dill, dried dill. There we go, half teaspoon half teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, I got my onion powder, half teaspoon. And avoiding the clumps, because there's a couple in there. There's half teaspoon there. Half teaspoon pink Himalayan sea salt. That's what we use at our house. I keep mine in a little crock. There we go. Half teaspoon black pepper. Where is my black pepper? Yeah, black pepper must be hiding out. Seriously, oh, here it is. <laughs> I 
real mess today. Thanks for being here. <laughs> My black pepper, I was gonna say, it must be hanging out with the cream cheese somewhere. Half teaspoon black pepper, and then a quarter teaspoon smoked paprika. If you don't have smoked paprika, it's not gonna make or break it. You can just skip that step. Um, I like a little smokiness, so I'm popping mine in there. There we go, I think that completes my dressing. Let me just give one little overview of my, there, I did it, yeah, that was that. Okay, I'm gonna pop this puppy here on the Vitamix, and I'm gonna start on low, if you're not familiar with Vitamix, start on low, let it start collecting the greens and chopping up the tomatoes, and then we're gonna bring her a little higher. Hopefully that block of cream cheese is gonna behave for me while I'm on camera. We'll find out. And we'll find out right now because it feels it felt a little stiff in there. So I'm just gonna press it down in and make it get closer to the blade. That hunka hunka cream cheese. Oh, so frustrating. Uh, especially when I took the time to make sure that it was room temp for this segment, and then I can't find it. I mean, that's the way it goes, that's life. Let's bring her back up, see if I can avoid adding more liquid. By all means, you can add more liquid. The liquid I do suggest would be milk. Again, we're talking full fat, real deal. We do a raw milk co-op when we cannot, when we run out too soon, we end up with organic milk in a carton. Tastes way different, like pasteurized milk tastes weird, inflammatory, don't do it so often. cheese work with me now you can see why I do suggest it being room temp because the hard block of cream cheese isn't as friendly even in a Vitamix as a softer cream cheese let's see if I can't get this done I'll show you in a second. This is, I think it's because the cream cheese is not room temp. It's a little thicker <laughs> than I would like. I will be, for the sake of right now, add in some organic whole milk. I'd suggest this over water so that you keep with the flavor uh, of the dairy and not switch out and dilute the flavor. Here we go. I prefer you be here and learn why I choose these ingredients. Okay, you see it's a little thick. You're gonna go ahead and give her a little taste test. Woo, it's got a kick from the jalapeno. It's definitely ranch, but I think it's more like a Fiesta ranch or a, it's not Chipotle, because I'm not going with Chipotle peppers. This is a zesty ranch, how about that? I don't know, I'm gonna go with Fiesta Ranch. Um, green and beautiful. This is not quite done yet because it needs to marinate in its own flavors. So I suggest pouring it into a nice little jar, getting it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. If you're in a time crunch and you need to serve up this salad or this dressing with something, because it's great with veggies too, you might throw it in the freezer even for about 30 minutes. Um, because once you get it out and it's been chilled, the flavor, mm, the flavors come alive. Now the lime is showing itself. When you first taste it, you're going to be like, I don't know. She said this is amazing. Just give it some time to do its thing all together. And you're going to be thanking me, I promise, for this dressing. It's Greek yogurt, cream cheese, and a lot of herbs. <laughs> and you're gonna be loving it on a lot of different dressings. Switching gears really quickly, just a switch of gears, hang tight while I clear my space. 
I'm going to stack all this up and remove it while I bring forward the salad. I had told you I'm using tuna in this. If you hate tuna, still make this salad. But choose a canned uh, chicken breast. You can even choose regular chicken breast if you have that laying around your house all the time. Okay, you're gonna do a nice big bowl. What I'm creating could be a full meal. That's what we're talking about, nourishing yourself in the daytime so you're not starving and sabotaging yourself in the night. So when you are eating salad, don't you dare skimp on those vegetables. A salad should not be a couple handfuls and be like, oh, yay, I have my salad for lunch. That's called a snack. And you're gonna be malnourished and you are going to be reaching for the first drive-through on the way home from work because you're starving. So stop starving yourself. Ooh, spring mix. Here we go. This is spinach and spring mix. Why did I choose this? Because uh, it was a better date and looked a little better than just spinach. So you're going to go with what you want to do. You can either go, you know, organic baby spinach or you could do like a mix like I have here. Two handfuls. That's about two cups. If I actually was measuring it, it would go into the cup. I'd pop her in there. Who needs to measure? Two handfuls. Um, we're going to rock and roll with that as the bed and let's start stacking in the beautiful things. We're going to go with a half cup of organic black beans. These are canned. These come from Aldi's for 89 cents a can. I mean, talk about affordability. This is a very mindful carbohydrate. Of course, we call them legumes um, because they pack in the protein. So I'm adding seven more grams of protein and a very mindful carb. It's 20 grams carb, but let me explain those carbs. Those carbs include eight grams of fiber. So you're talking 12 net carbs. Um, if you are not on a keto diet, because I think those are a little crazy, um, I'm about balance and we use carbohydrates as energy and we need them for happy brain too. So this is a mindful carb because of the amount of fiber. I'm just going to sprinkle them on nice and pretty because I like pretty salad. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I like pretty. Um, and then we're going with a can of tuna. This is skipjack. If you buy tuna, this is what you should be buying. Uh, let's talk about why this is healthier than doing white albacore or chunk light. This is sustainable food. Pull, line, caught. What does that mean? It means they don't take these nets and kill dolphins and throw in other fish. And they're like, yeah, it's going to taste the same. Let's put it all in the can. So it's dolphin safe. Um, stop killing the dolphins by fishing for those giant tunas. These skipjack are smaller and they are pole caught. This is called sustainable fishing. I have a whole can. I cut it. I drained it. And now I'm going to uh, kind of shred it up a little. That's just me. I want them a little broken up. If you are using chicken, uh, look on the label and make sure it's just chicken. Because a lot of those canned chickens have, sadly, a lot of um, food food preservative in it or even like modified modified food. I don't even know what to say. It's, it's not all just chicken. <laughs> so check your labels. Even the ones that say premium chicken. I don't know why. It came from a premium animal, a premium chicken, but it didn't mean they only put premium ingredients in it. So Trader Joe's is really um, a trusted source in their canned chicken. Or I'll second that because I bought that a lot. Um, otherwise, you're going to go with skipjack tuna. All right. Now, why I chose the Fiesta Ranch is because I feel like these elements of the salad remind me of Mexican. Like, I've got the black beans in there. I love on my tacos and my Mexican food uh, peppers. So, I'm going with two sweet peppers. I cut them similarly as I showed you with the... Uh, with the jalapeno. I cut the head out and then I take the spines out with the seeds. I don't like to eat the seeds so much. They don't digest so well, so I omit seeds when I'm dealing with peppers. There we go. And I like to keep them long slices. I think they're more beautiful. Um, and I'm just gonna do, do, do. I almost caught my finger. I don't know if you caught that reaction. The knife literally hit my fingernail 
I think it put a dent in my nail polish. That would have been worse than showing you cutting a jalapeno in midair. Me chopping my finger off on camera. For reals. Okay, got my peppers going on in there. You can choose how many peppers you want. If it's a large enough pepper, you might want one. And these are the little mini bell peppers. The like little small ones. You might choose two. That's gonna be your preference. This is your salad. And then I'm gonna go with tomato. I think cherry tomato. And you know, it's bringing in an element of salsa without pouring salsa on this. Or an element of, um, what, what is the salsa that is fresh? That's a really yummy. Not, I mean, oh my goodness, my head is completely blanking. I love the fresh salsa, fresh made salsa. Cilantro, onions, and tomatoes with some lime and garlic. Someone hook me up in the comment fields. What is fresh salsa called? It's got a name. It's really, not, it's at the tip of my tongue and I'm not thinking of it correctly. So I'm gonna go with the tomatoes. Uh-huh. And I like this, it's just beautiful. Next is cucumber. When I'm doing taco night, I love something crunchy. So I'm only adding cucumber. Yeah, sure, it's healthy. It adds a lot of water into the food. Um, it's very cooling. Uh, it can help cool down your body. But I add it for the crunch element because this isn't like iceberg or romaine with a crunchy lettuce. So I like to add a crunch. If you prefer, if you don't like cucumbers, this is about a half cup of cucumbers. Um, if you don't love cucumbers, you might instead opt for a broccoli slaw. You know, something that's gonna give it a little extra crunch is, and, and a little um, extra water. I love, I love the freshness of cucumber. There we go, almost done. We're gonna rock out half of an avocado. At my house, we do mini avocados because I find that there's almost just as much flesh inside and you can get a bag of minis for like $3. And there are, I don't know, six or eight in there. Uh-huh, that's what I'm telling you. It's like $2.89 for a bag of minis instead of 89 cents per avocado that you would get on the big guys. My daughter loves it. We use avocado every day, so um, it's affordable. And I feel like you get so much of the good stuff. You get a lot of the flesh coming out of it. It's not a huge thing of seed. Okay, and let's bring in some fresh herbs into it. If you like, you're gonna go with green onion, um, AKA scallion, spring onion, and I just use scissors and chop that. Yes, one green onion. You can go as far into the white of the onion as you please. It gets stronger in flavor. And then I told you, because I don't think it's dressing super cilantro-y, can I say that? Super tastes like cilantro. I like cilantro in my Mexican food. This is kind of like a fiesta bowl here. I'm gonna call it my tuna fiesta bowl. How about that? Because I'm chopping in probably, I've already washed and dried this, although I see one little critter. Get away, little critter. Hey, critters mean it's, nicely from the farm. Okay, I'm chopping away probably about three tablespoons of cilantro on here. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful, I'm gonna show off my tuna to you. And last but not least, you know, if you don't like cilantro, you're gonna skip that step for sure, because this fresh cilantro is gonna bring forward that flavor. Last but not least, we're gonna add a little um, crumbled cheese. If you wanna go full me Mexicano, there is the Mexican crumbled cheese you could buy. I just go with feta because we have feta often in our refrigerator. Nutritionally, it's packing in a lot of flavor and saltiness and it's a lower fat cheese than doing a lot of the other cheeses and soft cheeses. Okay, so I'm just gonna sprinkle on about three, two or three tablespoons of feta. Mmm. This, my darling, after you take a little dab of salt, I think salt brings forward vegetables, the flavor of vegetables. Uh, this, my darling, is your beautiful Fiesta salad. Look how big that is. Once you toss this up with that cilantro dressing, you are going to be full. And it's gonna take your body some time to digest all these raw vegetables. You're gonna get tons of fiber, which keep you fuller longer, and you're getting high protein, not only from the, the beans and the tuna. Did we even talk about how much protein is in a can of tuna? Um, I don't think we did. 12 grams 
from your tuna. You've got yourself uh, seven more. You're at 19 grams just on the food choices. Vegetables always have protein in them. And then the dressing itself, the entire dressing, this entire thing, two and a half cups, is 31 grams of protein. Very low carb. Can you see how nourishing this is? So once you get it, I think I need a fork to show you my salad that I finished and tossed, ready to show you, show off. Once you toss it, it's gorgeous. It's delicious. You'll opt for the chicken if you don't like the tuna, but I find that the tuna is amazing. Mm-hmm, big old bite here. Mm, mm-hmm. Because that dressing is so good, you can put it on any salad <laughs> and it feels like you're eating at a restaurant. You're welcome. So, where do you buy that? Mm. I'm not sure which one, Ken, uh, Kenyon, that you were uh, asking about, but text me in the comments where you want to know where I purchased something, and I will gladly hook you up. If you're not on my email list and you want this mindful recipe in your inbox and every new KJ Kitchen, oh, the tuna. Okay, where did I buy the tuna? That one in particular came from Aldi's. You can also grab them at Trader Joe's. I think I've had less, um, less success at Walmart. I think I have seen Skipjack tuna at Walmart and it's like $3 for a tiny can. But at Trader Joe's and Aldi's, you're getting it for like a dollar, dollar twenty-nine. Yeah, it's affordable and sustainable and that's where we wanna stay is with, with good clean food. Um, but if you're not on that email list, I'm gonna post the link here. Um, if you are clicking it immediately, you're gonna get last week's recipe, which was cauliflower steak pizza, which was awesome. Um, but this recipe will be coming out within the next 24 to 48 hours, and it will get in your inbox. So if you're not subscribed, do it. I'll post that as soon as I'm done. I'm getting over to my private club, the KJ Fit Club. I'm getting over into that private group, and I'm going live for a Tabata workout. If you don't have time in your day and you're not subscribed to a gym and you need a virtual trainer, you're also going to just shoot me a little message and ask me about my private group. I'd love to have you in there. It's healthy living, healthy lifestyle, challenges, tips, recipes, um, and workouts, right? That's fantastic. I'm happy to be here for your journey. Everyone's got their own pace, but so long as we don't stop. We make healthy a habit and that's really what it's all about. Thanks so much for being here. I will be here again next Wednesday. You enjoy. I know what I'm enjoying for lunch today so that I'm not sabotaging myself tonight. You have a wonderful, blessed Wellness Wednesday. We'll see you next week.